How's it going? Let's talk outside heating. My current solution is an open brazier. As you can see, it's a bit crap. Let's make something a bit less crap. This is the design that I've come up with. It's a simplified rocket stove. Hopefully it's going to be a little bit more effective at being a heater with a radiator cap at the top and radiator fins down the side to make the most of the exhaust gases. Pellet fed with an ashtray at the bottom, all to hopefully make this a little bit easier to use as a heater. But let's start building. hopper straight in here's the burn chamber and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a uh, sled that lives in here a little cup at the bottom and then the cup will hold all the pellets that fall in and then I'll have a chute that will narrow down and you can just pull it out and adjust it to change the amount of feed this will be your air intake which is down here which will have an adjust vent so you can change the amount of airflow as well as I'll have a bit of airflow coming through the pallet side so I'll probably have the sled running on some chunky runners uh, just so you can get a bit of airflow through the top uh, this is your ashtray ashtray is just going to cut this out pop that out Day two, finished the body, got all the files catted up to make the inserts, that's the vents, the ashtray, and the sled that holds the pallets. Now let's cut it out on the plasma cutter. Unfortunately, the tip did touch here, here, and here, and down at the other end. This is called 10, 2.5mm plate, and obviously when it heats up, you can see it warps like crazy. I don't have torch height control, so pretty much just going off whatever it's probed off. I also reduced the height to get a cleaner cut to reduce the kerf. Unfortunately, that's meant that these have not cut out. I guess uh, it's time to use the grinder. Right, what we're doing now is the ashtray. We've got ourselves a bit of box section with a cut down the middle so it can sit inside. We've got ourselves rods and some blanking plates. Both of these are actually measured to the internal size of the tube, not of this dimension. This dimension here is actually reduced because it's been pinched in. The pinching in is actually from the internal stresses from when the box section itself formed. So when we've cut it off, we've removed the support which has led it to pinch in. By inserting these rods on both sides as well as the plates, hopefully we're going to return it to square and make sure that the mating faces are even and parallel. Next thing is to weld in the rods. It's just easier before we start welding everything together. I'll get the welder in better, get some nicer seams. Now, as the saying goes, if you have to grind your welds, you're a grinder, not a welder. So off camera, I may grind this, but in reality, I have just welded it. You know, it's a big shame, I have to grind the welds off so it's all flush. Not that the welds look bad, they look really good, that's why it's a bit of a shame. Um, so far we're working on the ashtray. The ashtray itself fits really snugly, but unfortunately it needs to be held in with constant pressure. Right, this is my solution. I'm gonna have a cam system to hold the ashtray in. It's gonna have the rod match the ashtray and the, at the end of the rod, I'm gonna have a cut down the middle to create like a semicircle. The semicircle will only be about 10 mils down. The rod itself will drop into a receiving block. The semicircle falling through the gap. Once it's in, you'll rotate by a lever and that rotation will cinch down the ashtray into the main body as well as hold it there. At least I hope. Right, let's cut this out. There's your cam, or there's your cam, I guess. Uh, it's got the funny shape and the rounded top edge, and then you've got the mating surface. Drop them together and then rotate, and they'll simply lock itself down. Currently, there's not enough deflection in the rod to actually lock the um, ashtray in, but by taking off a bit on the back side, if you think of it like a seesaw, it will lift up, and then you'll get the deflection that you need. Right, let's do that.
Nice. I'm sure I'm gonna wear this out just but before I even use it because I love playing this so much. It's very satisfying. I also got it lined up so it pulls everything up to square again. All the spaces match nicely. Welcome to day three of the decline of my physical well-being. Uh, today we're gonna start on the sled that holds the pellets and then and then we'll work on the vents, I think. Right, something like that. Right. Hopper, we've got the little curve at the bottom for all the pellets to sit. We've got a little tab here so it doesn't slide in too far. Right, all lit up now. Now we just need to make a form at the top to stop the pellets overflowing. That's the sled all welded up. We've got the sides all squared up. It's got the top plate here. The top plate's actually only welded up, up about halfway down, just before it starts uh, increasing or decreasing in angle or pitch. Uh, this will let me bend it up. I put grooves in it as well to just make it easy to bend. As well as the walls here can be spread. This will all just adjust the amount of flow of the pellets. This will fill up with pellets from here. This is where the burn will happen, air intake underneath. I've curved it like this because I want the build-up of pellets to be in the middle. I want a bit of air on each side, just so when priming and burning, it has constant airflow. Too many pellets fall on there, it's going to suffocate itself. The burn's usually at the bottom, too many pellets on top, it's just not going to have enough airflow. We've got our vent plate itself, and then we've got a hinge. The hinge is just primed, so I'll just strip back the wire wheel. I recommend against getting a galved hinge, but do get something that's relatively heavy duty. i got fixed pin. I know I'm not going to be taking the pin out and re-greasing it, it's just going to get hot anyway, so I'm not too phased. I'm going to add a little grate to the ashtray. This is so if I'm not using pellets I can remove this. I won't be able to put wood kindling down here because of the chimney. So oh, this will have to come out if you're not using pellets. And that means I still need a burn area and I'll have the I'll have that just on top of the ashtray. I could probably put this inside the body itself, but I want this to be easily accessible so I can remove it and change it out. Right, we finished the stove. Unfortunately, it's too low. We're gonna have to lift it up maybe 200 off the ground, just so when you're sitting down, it's at a more appropriate height. I'm thinking for the legs, I'll use a bit of rebar. Right, just finished the legs. I did it all out of rebar, kept the weight down as well as it made it makes the rocket stove look a bit more floaty. I've got to put in a little tray at the bottom here just to catch any ash that falls out when you take out the ashtray, as well as it's somewhere to put kindling or pellet. The next thing that we're going to work on and the final thing is actually the radiator cap, top of the chimney and then radiator fins that come down the side just to make the most of being an outdoor heater. Right, let's quit cracking. Now I did play around with doing a triangle at the top as a um, for the chimney cap, but it started getting too much of a juxtaposition between the uh, tube of the frame and the exhaust cap, as well as I know I've done a triangle at the bottom base, but the triangle at the base and the rocket stove itself is really good because it, it really separates the two, but having the exhaust cap, which is meant to be part of the rocket stove itself, look different, doesn't quite fit. Here's the finished rocket stove. We've got the storage at the bottom here. Get our air vent. We've got our hopper tray. Remove this and you can use your kindling, like so. Uh, if not, then you just fill this up with your pellets. You fill it up via the top here. And down here we've got our little ashtray. Just comes out. That's where the wood burns once you've got the hopper out. Cinch that down. Over here we've got the air intake. We've got a little catch here just to keep, keep it closed the whole time. Right. Let's test it out.
about 20 seconds with the blowtorch and now we've got flames coming out the top. Wow. So the air vent just on full. I've got the air vents both on fully open. I just need to be conscious that we don't want flames coming up the uh, hopper. That looks good. That's awesome. Yes, it works. Wow. The heat. Probably shouldn't be so close. It works. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. So I've just done my first burn test and it's completely worked. Uh, it's been on for maybe a minute, two minutes now. The heat's radiating off it really nicely and evenly, like all the way around. The hopper itself hasn't overheated like I was, I was a bit worried it would. Um, it's self-feeding. Yeah, I just, I can't believe that it's just worked on the first attempt. Uh, just threw the pellets in and hit the blowtorch on for maybe 30 seconds underneath to the air vent and yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know if you can see the mirage of the heat coming out, and, but and the flames were coming up through the uh, up to the exhaust uh, cap just before. Fantastic, it works. Right, so we just finished the uh, testing. It's just outside cooling down now. Um, I tested for about 30 minutes. Uh, it burnt really well. It was low maintenance, uh, self-contained and lightweight. So it's really met the brief that I was looking for. So I'm really happy with that. The self-feeding mechanism worked. It self-fed for 30 minutes. So yeah, worked really well, really chuffed with it. Uh, the only thing that it does need is it needs to be uh, widened at the, the end just so we get more pellets in the burn chamber. We're having complete combustion. There was no soot or smoke. So we are getting complete combustion. So we're getting the most out of the wood itself. I'm just feeling that we could have just more wood burning. Um, it was working really well, but it is hard to feel the heat. It's mid summer right now, in the middle of the day, scorching. It's probably 30 degrees outside. So really hard to see how hot it is, like how effective it is in a cold environment, but that's okay. I'm sure in winter I'll do a full test again, especially with a couple more design changes. I'm sure there's stuff out there that I can make better. And if there's anything that you guys recommend, then let me know. Really appreciate it. Catch you later.